Hey, here's 8 5, pharynx and esophagus coming at you. All right, what is your pharynx? Ah, uh, there it is. It's way back there. That is the uh, back portion behind the uvula. And that's not good. Let's postpone that. It's the back portion behind the uvula where both air from your nose and your mouth and food happen to hang out and coexist, coexist together. Uh, the pharynx is made out of two parts the oropharynx, which you can actually see when you look way back in your mouth, and the laryngopharynx, which is kind of more like mm, right about there behind. I'll show you a picture in a sec. Uh, the, the pharynx is region for the passage of food, fluids, and air. Contains stratified squamous epithelium, so it's constantly sloughing off and repairing itself. And lots of mucus producing glands to help things go down a little bit easier. There's two layers of skeletal muscle that make up your pharynx, called the inner and outer pharyngeal constrictor muscles. Pretty much everything about that term tells you what you need to know. So inner, inside, pharyngeal, pharynx, constrictor, constrict, muscle. So it makes it pretty easy. So let's take a look at some pictures. Okay, so this is where air goes in. And so this top region up here, it's the back of your throat, but it's more towards your nose. That's called the nasopharynx. Makes sense, naso, nasal. Then we have the oro, oro referring to mouth. So this is the mouth pharynx. This is the hypo, which we also refer to the laryngopharynx because it has it's right next to your larynx or your voice box. So all you have to do is just put where it's at, that word in front, naso, oro, or laryngeo, and that'll tell you about where that pharynx is. Here's your muscles. And so we only talked about the interior and uh, the outer one, or superior right there, but there's a middle one as well. So you can kind of see how all this works. So we have the inferior constrictor. So you can see it kind of has a hold of your Adam's apple as well. Middle constrictor down here, superior right here. So this kind of helps you do the swallowing. Here's a view from the front looking this way at you. Okay, your esophagus. So once you swallow the food, it goes directly into your esophagus, which is a collapsed tube. So if you're not actively swallowing, it is flat and, and thick. There, I mean, there's no lumen, there's no hole in it. So it's a collapsed tube that moves food down into the mediastinal cavity, so right here in the middle. Through the diaphragm, there's a hole called the esophageal hiatus. Hiatus means hole. And joins the top of the stomach at the cardiac orifice. Remember, orifice just means hole. So there's a hole at the top of the stomach called the cardiac orifice. The orifice is surrounded by the cardiac or gastroesophageal sphincter. Sphincter, remember, circular muscle that can open and close. Cardiac, because it's close to the heart. Gastroesophageal is a little bit better because it, it's the junction be between the gastro, stomach, and esophageal, esophagus, you know, where they join together. There's uh, four layers, just like the small intestine. So mucosa, submucosa, uh, muscularis, and then the serosa after that. Here's a couple pictures of your esophagus. We'll start with this one. So here's the pharynx. It's kind of the back of your throat. Then it goes into this part. They call it cervical, because remember cervical means neck. So this is your neck esophagus. Thoracic, chest, chest esophagus. And abdominal abdomen esophagus and then here's the sphincter is right in there here's another couple of different views from it so here's your mouth food goes past the epiglottis goes down into the tube behind the trachea and then if you notice here's the aorta of your heart it kind of wraps around it so sometimes the food and your aorta are really close together and then here's the diaphragm here and here and so uh, it goes right through the diaphragm into your stomach here's a lateral view and so again, we have the esophagus with the muscles, goes down in here, kind of in front. So notice how close it is to your heart. So it really gets squished between your aorta and your heart, which is why heartburn is called that, because look how close it is to your heart. Then there's the hole right here, which it goes through, and the esophagus pops out the other end. Okay, the digestive process involves your mouth um, because it's used in ingestion, taking in the food mechanical digestion, the chewing of the food, and propulsion, the swallowing of the food. There's absolutely no absorption that goes on in the mouth, although we can begin digestion with the uh, breakdown of certain chemicals like starches. So I guess they should probably add chemical digestion 
<clears throat> you want to see something cool? Watch this. Ready? Hang on. Can you see that? That's my bird. That's Goober. He comes for peanuts every day. Hi, Goober. <laughs> he came to join me. The pharynx and the esophagus serve only to propel food from the mouth to the stomach. That is their only job. No chewing, no grinding, no absorbing, no digesting. Just send it from point A to point B. Chewing and swallowing. Mastication is the actual act of chewing. Partly voluntary, partly reflexive. Your brain pretty much takes over so you don't have to think about what you're doing. And then we have deglutition, which is a fancy name for swallowing. There's 22 different muscles involved in swallowing. A lot of people have swallowing issues. Um, if you have a small esophagus or a small larynx or you know anything in that area, uh, weak muscles, it can cause a, a hard time getting the food down. So people like that tend to choke a lot more often because the weak muscles don't do a good job of propelling food down into the right tube. The buckle phase, remember buckle means cheeks. So the buckle phase of chewing and swallowing is in the mouth and it's voluntary. What happens is when you're about ready to swallow, and next time you swallow, think about what actually goes on in your mouth. First thing that happens, the tip of the tongue goes against the roof of the mouth, like that. And then it kind of does the wave like this. So it starts here and then push, 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 push all the way uh, back. So it pushes against a hard palate and then it contracts. So the tongue contract, oh, big bug, uh, contracts and it forces the bolus. Remember, that's just a clump of food into the oro pharynx, the very, very back of your throat. Here's a, here's the buckle phase right there. So as you can see, it's floating around inside of your mouth. And then as you begin to swallow, it's still above the epiglottis, it's in your oropharynx, so that's still referred to as the cheek phase. From there, uh, we'll get to the notes on this in a second, we have the pharyngeal phase, which is when the epiglottis closes over the opening to the trachea, and the food then gets propelled downwards. From there, peristalsis begins to take over and sends the food down. Notice the epiglottis is pointing down at this point. It eventually flips back up and allows you to breathe again. Then the bolus of food works its way down till it hits the sphincter. The sphincter opens up, squeezes food into your stomach, and you have now ended the esophageal phase. So let's take a look at that. Pharyngeal esophageal phase is completely involuntary. You have absolutely no control over that. The tongue locks off the mouth. The soft palate in the back raises to close off the nasopharynx so that way when you swallow, it doesn't come out of your nose. Although, if you've all had the joy of laughing too hard and something comes out your nose, we know that it can be overcome. The larynx also rises, which is why when guys swallow, you see their Adam's apple go up and down. So that way the epiglottis covers the opening to the respiratory passageways and you don't choke, and the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes to allow the food to sneak on down. Solid food usually takes about four to eight seconds to get from the back of the mouth down into the stomach whereas fluids usually only takes one to two seconds. A lot of times you can feel it. If you have really cold water and you drink it, you can feel it work its way down. Sometimes food feels like it gets stuck in there, and that's because it does take a while to get down. The gastroesophageal sphincter, this guy right there, uh, relaxes, opens up, allows food to enter the stomach, where it tends to hang out here and become something called chyme. But we'll talk about that later because we are done with the esophagus. Okay, bye-bye.